we, whoops, I'm so excited, I almost fell over. We are going prospecting for gold. Now this is not any tourist trap, you know, get some little pieces of pie, iron pyrite, you think you're excited. We're out with a prospector named John Berriman, and you sign up for his class, $150, a whole day will take you out, give you lunch, and teach you how to actually pan for gold. And he made me a promise, he said, when you set up, you got me for a day, you'll get gold. So we are up in a stream in Montana, and we're about to learn how to set up pan, or panning and sluice box and get some gold. <laughs> And I can't wait, because when we get that gold, we're going to get ourselves a brand new car. <laughs> the dream of striking it rich has always pushed man to take risks, whether the dream is a new car or a castle. But with the art of gold panning almost lost to the ages, treasure in this vein may not be measured in nuggets, but rather in knowledge. Well, because there's a lot of gold miners around here, but I couldn't get none of them to teach me. So I go to the library, and I got every book I could possibly get, I would have probably paid a thousand dollars for somebody to teach me back mm -hmm. then instead of me doing all of the reading. I'll teach you what to look for, the different colors in the soil. That makes a lot of the difference. Redder the soil is better. Always remember, redder is, is better. better. John also claims that success in gold panning lies as much in shape as it does in shade. It's important to know how the bends in a river will point to where the banks are infused with gold. Gold is always trying to get out of the force of the water okay. and to hide. Right. So it is shoved into the bank here mm -hmm. and it drops off where the, where the curve goes around on the backside of that bank. With a careful eye, John picks his spot, moving the bigger rocks by hand and the gravel below by shovel. Shovel after shovel, overburden slowly gains a coral hue, hater. That is the cue to start sifting. With a pan full of water, gravel and soils are separated by a spinning motion, reminiscent of an old washing machine. The finer material falls to the bottom of the pan. The gravel remains, but before the scrapple is tossed, best to check it well. You always scratch around. Look in the bottom. You could have a sapphire in the bottom, or if that nugget won't go through there, by golly, it's big enough, it'll jump out at you like a, a neon light bulb. Sure. And so always check your gravel before you throw them out. Okay. With a little more than silt left over in the pan, the tedious task of panning begins. This is where the impatient fail and the prospectors sail. With a samba-like swaying motion, water and chaff gently spill over the edge, leaving all but the smallest and heaviest items in the bottom. With a little bit of luck and about 20 minutes of time, John strikes pay dirt. Right here, you got yep. several uh, specks of gold. Yep. There. They're specks. They're awesome. If all them specks add up. The gold will not go out of that bottle. Make sure water is over it, and you turn that loose and suck up your gold. Now, lest you think that this is all there is to panning, a new technology emerges. The dirt that is proven to bear gold is moved to a sluice box where Mother Nature and a healthy current will do the work for you. John explains that once you know where to find that pay dirt, sending your material through the cascade of a sluice box is a much faster method. Yeah, there it starts coming over to the next section. This is doing all that panning for you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So, like I said, once you've done your testing, yeah. you find where you're getting the most gold in your trick. <clears throat> you put your gold pans down, your classifier in your bucket, you classify it down so you're not putting big rocks. Big rocks will bounce to there and hit your gold, knock your gold loose. So you get it down closer to your size of gold, and you'll recover a lot more gold this way. But this is really scientific. You gotta know what kind of ore you're looking for. You gotta know how to read a stream so you know where it will be forced. And John explains not only where those places are, but why the gold gets there. And he would actually prefer to have you bring your own materials or your own equipment up so he can show you how to use your own sluice box. But if you wanna buy it from him, he's got it. Now, 150 bucks for a, a day's training, that's a pretty good deal. And um, you say, well, is it worth it at the end of the day? I'd say absolutely, but it's hard work.